welcome everyone. So glad to be here today. It's Thursday, December the second. I'm gonna open up that word prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just glad to be here this evening. Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is our Father. Lord, we just um, thank you for this day as you've given us a chance to do better. And we ask you to forgive us for our sinful ways that all our trespasses against you, Lord. Because when we do that, we have greatly have sinned. But because of your Son, Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, that you have given unto us if we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we can come boldly to the throne of grace and just ask you to Forgive us for our sins if we confess our sins. You are faithful to forgive us. And Father, we just come at this time just asking you to cleanse us, to create in all of us a clean heart and renew our minds. And Lord, we need to have your heart in us and we need to serve you with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our might. So Lord, we thank you for giving us another chance to do better. And we thank you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, it was so good to us. If everyone would just turn to Hebrews, the third chapter. Hebrews, the third chapter. And then the uh, third chapter of Hebrews. Well, verse. It says here, take care of brothers and sisters, that there not be in any one of you a wicked, unbelieving heart. That's the message. A wicked, unbelieving heart which refuses to trust and rely on the Lord. A heart that turns away from the living God. And that alone will get you in big trouble. Because we can't do anything on our own without the Lord. And if you uh, go with me just for a minute to Psalms the 23rd. Psalms the 23rd. Chapter of Psalms. It says, the Lord is my shepherd to feed, to guide, and shield me. And that's why you can't do anything by yourself. The Lord is our shepherd to feed and guide and shield us. I shall not want. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters, quiet waters. In other words, he makes everything come for us. That's for the believers, the followers of Christ. It said, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod to protect, your staff to guide, they comfort me and console me. Help me, Holy Spirit. To you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell forever throughout all my days in the house and in the presence of the Lord. And the only way you can do that, uh, as it says in Hebrews, the third chapter, that 12th verse, you had to have a believing heart. And it's saying, take care, brothers and sisters, that there be in any one of you a wicked, unbelieving heart which refuses to trust and rely on the Lord, a heart that turns away from the living God. And see, God wants us to follow him. And then you stay in that same uh, Chapter Hebrews 3. 
the third chapter. It says in the 18th verse, it says, And to whom did he swear an oath that they may they would not enter his rest? But those who disobeyed, those who would not listen to his word. So see that they were not able to enter into his rest, a promised land, because of unbelief and unwillingness to trust God. See, we, we had to trust God within all our ways and our thoughts, and he has to be in our heart. And uh, if you go to the 13th verse, it says, but continually encourage one another every day. This is what we have to do, believers. Encourage one another. As long as it is called today. We had to do what we had to do today. Because, see, tomorrow is a promise to any of us. And there is an opportunity, it says, there, so that none of you will be hardened into Self rebellion by deceitfulness of sin, its cleverness, its delusive glamour, and sophistication. And this is how people's hearts get turned. It says, For we believers have become partakers of Christ, sharing in all that the Messiah has for us. If only we hold firm our newborn confidence, which originally led us to him until the end. See, we got to continue to be with him until the very end. And it says, today, while there is still an opportunity, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as when they provoked me in rebellion in the desert of Meribah. And what had happened there, the, uh, Moses had led the people out of Egypt. They were in slavery. And God called Moses to lead them out of slavery so they could go to the promised land. But instead of them having the hearts of love for God, they were very rebellious. They were very discontent. They were very wicked. And they were unbelieving. And so they Some didn't. Believe. Yeah, so they did not receive this rest because the way you receive rest with God, you gotta you gotta believe and trust Him, and you gotta do what He tells you to do. You have to be obedient uh, to His word, and you won't be obedient to the word if you don't know the word. And that's why we're compelled to do Bible study and go through the lessons. Not only so you would know the word, but so we would know it. Each time you read and you get more knowledge, the Lord will bless you with more. Uh, because he knows, he knows everyone's heart. Uh, there's nothing you can hide from God. Because uh, he see it all in the in fourth chapter here. Uh, six through, I'll start at the sixth verse. Actually, I, I'll go ahead and read. Um, I was going over that, but I might as well read it through the word. It says the first verse and the fourth verse. It says, therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still remains and is freely offered today. So you can still have this rest today. Mm -hmm. Let us fear in case any one of you may seem to come short of reaching it or think he has come too late. It's not too late mm -hmm. today. This time uh, is in the evening. It's going on 8 o'clock in some parts of the country. Maybe going on 7 o'clock. It said, for indeed we have had the good news of salvation preached to us just as the Israelites. Also when the good news of the promised land came to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them because it was not united with faith in God by those who heard. Mm -hmm. They just had a lot of unbelief. Amen. And they rather had made idols that they could look at and worship to them than to worship to our Lord and Savior. Or, you know, to worship to God. Because then it was, it was God. It's always been the Son of God and the Holy Spirit 
they have always been together. But God sent his son here as a man to walk amongst us. But they didn't want to hear him either. And it says, for we who believe, that is, we who personally trust and confidently rely on God, enter the rest. So we have this inner peace now because we are confident in our salvation and assured of his power, just as he has said, as I swore an oath in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And the thing of it is, if you believe Christ is your Lord and Savior, and you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior, that alone should give you calmness and peace and rest, restfulness, mm -hmm. and says, and this he said, although his works were completed from the foundation of the world, waiting for all who would believe, because he's extraordinarily patient with all of us. He doesn't want us to perish. And it says, for somewhere in the scripture, he has said this about the seventh day, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this, they shall not enter my rest. It says, therefore, in the sixth verse, therefore, since the promise remains for some to enter his rest, and those who formerly had good news preached to them, failed to grasp it and, and did not enter because of their unbelief evidence by disobedience. See, that's the evidence. Um, you can say you believe and you mm -hmm. trust and all of this, all you want to, to God, but he's looking at our heart and he knows when we're perpetrating a fraud. Um, you can put on an act, but he knows when you act and he can see right through it. It says, he again sets a definite day, a new today, Provided another opportunity to enter that rest. See, he hasn't given up on us. He's given us a, another day, a new day. Well, every day. Every day. So every day we wake up, we should say, thank you. What is it that you want me to do today? What do I need to do better? Because we have not reached <laughs> the end. We, yeah, we're not yeah. all there. No. We have much, much things to um to turn away from in this world because we be seeing everything and all kind of voices are coming at us from people trying to tell us what to do from the government, you know, from the White House to the church house. And a lot of it don't even be the right thing. It says, uh, he again said a definite day, a new today, providing another opportunity to enter that rest by singing through David. After so long a time, just as, has, just as has been said before, and the words already quoted, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Because as I said in that 12th verse, take care, brothers and sisters, that there not be in any one of you a wicked, unbelieving heart which refuses to trust and rely on the Lord. A heart that turns away from the living God. See, our God is alive today. If he wasn't, this earth would just be no more. I know many people don't realize he's holding this earth in the palm of his hand. He keeps everything in balance. He lets the rain fall. He lets the snow come. And we have all the different seasons and the leaves and everything that grows and, and gets consumed back into the earth. God has control over these things of nature. Man has brought much destruction on the earth by trying to create things. And man cannot create anything. Everything man make, he make it, he had to destroy something to make it. Man makes uh, nothing on his own. He's very uh, destructive. If you just went up for a minute with me, turn to Galatians, the first chapter, talking about Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 
Um, he says here, in that 13th verse, you know, God is sinner here. For he has rescued us and has drawn us to himself from the dominion of darkness and transformed, transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. God has done this. And he sent us the light because we were in darkness before he came. It says, in whom we have uh, redemption because of his sacrifice, resulting in the forgiveness of our sins and the cancellation of sin's penalties. That's why he came. It was no way we could be forgiven for our sins because God hates sin, but he loves his son. And once you accept his son as your Lord and Savior, that you believe that he died on the cross for you and me, and then he was resurrected from the grave by God. And he's sitting and making intercessory prayers for you and me. Then you receive eternal life. And you can go to God. He don't care how often you come to him throughout the day asking him to forgive you for something you have done wrong or something you done thought wrong or something that you mm -hmm. didn't do. I mean, it's a whole list of things. And so he wants us to confess. It says he is the exact living image of the essential manifestation of the unseen God. Mm -hmm. The invisible representation of the invisible, the firstborn, the preeminent one, mm -hmm. the sovereign and originator of all creation. Mm -hmm. It says for by him all things were created in heaven and on the earth. Things visible and invisible. See, God has made things you can't even see. So we need God. Without him, you're just blind. It says, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created and existed through him. That is by his activity and for him. Mm -hmm. And he himself existed and is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. He's holding this earth together. He's holding you together. He spoke us into existence. Mm -hmm. He controls all the atoms and protons and neutrons. He can bring matter together and make something out of nothing. And you can't see all those different things. But he mm -hmm. can see them because he's making them. And who are we to ignore that we have a living God? It says a living God. So when we have need of something, we supposed to pray to God, ask Him for what we need, and re repent mm -hmm. so He can hear us if you belong to Him. He knows who His children are and who isn't His children because of the, He's looking at your heart, and if it's wicked and unbelieving, and and refuse to trust in him and rely on him, and you turn it away from him, he know you're not one of his sheep. Because he is the good shepherd, as I read in the 23rd Psalms. Mm -hmm. And we follow him. Now go to John, the 10th chapter. I'm still keeping my finger in the Hebrews because I'm going to come back to him. But you know, I'm, I'm led by the Spirit. Uh, and so we have to be led by the Spirit. If you a child of Him, my Father, you're going to be led. You know you can't do nothing on your own because He says that about Himself. He said, I cannot do anything on my own. And he was a man. I'm a woman. I'm, in, I'm born in the flesh. But he was, he was born in the flux of a virgin Mary. And so he knows just how we feel down here. He's quite aware of everything. Don't, don't, uh, don't fool yourself. And uh, be saying, but he was, a, he was God, he was a deity and everything. So 
He didn't have to go through what he did. Yes, he did. He gave up his life for us. And he was obedient to our heavenly father. It says here in the uh, fifth chapter, I just started in the fifth chapter, because uh, people were angry with what he had to tell them. And he, you know what he told them? The truth. He told them just what God Almighty told him to say. It says here in the fifth chapter, uh, the 18th verse, it says, This made the Jews more determined to than ever to kill him for not only was he breaking the Sabbath from their viewpoint, but he was also calling God his own father, <laughs> making him equal with God. So Jesus answered them by saying, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, the son cannot, can do nothing of himself. Don't you know he's talking to us too? We can do nothing of ourselves. We can do nothing of himself, he said, of his own accord, unless it is something he sees the Father doing. But whatever things the Father does, the Son in turn also does in the same way. For the Father dearly loves the Son and shows him everything that he himself is doing, and the Father will show him greater works than these, so that you will be filled with wonder. It says, just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life and allows them to live on, even so the Son also gives life to those whom he wishes. And the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment, that is the pre uh, pre prerogative, prerogative, excuse me, of judging the Son, placing it entirely into his hands so that all will give honor and reverence and homage to the Son, just as they give honor to the Father. In fact, the one who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. So we, we had to recognize Jesus. If you do not recognize Jesus and love him as being the Son of God, you will not get to God. It says that in John, the, 14 chapter the sixth verse the only way to come to God is through Jesus Christ it says I assure you most solemnly say to you the person who hears my word the one who heeds my message and believes and trusts in him who sent me has possesses now eternal life that is eternal life actually begins the believer is transformed and does not come into judgment and condemnation but it's passed over from death into life. And this is one of the main reasons God wants your heart to be right. Mm -hmm. And it says here, uh, I assure you, I most solemnly say to you, a time is coming and is here now when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear it will live. That's just so what's so important for you to hear the word of God and to read the word of God so you can have life. It says, for as the Father has life in himself and is self-existent, even so he has given to the Son who has life in himself and is self-existent. And he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is a son of the man a son of man, a sinless human humanity qualify him to sit in judgment over man. He says, do not be surprised at this, for a time is coming when all those who are in tombs will hear, so even the dead will hear, and they will come out, those who did good things will come out to a resurrection of new life, but the but those who did evil will come out to a resurrection of judgment that is be sentenced. And so we don't want to be in that situation. Those are the unbelievers who are going to come out and be sentenced like that. And say, I can do nothing on my own initiative or authority. Just as I hear, I judge. And my judgment is fair, righteous and unbiased. Right. Because I do not... Uh, seek my own John the fifth Where's chapter. John the fifth chapter, thirtieth verse. 
because I do not seek my own will, but only the will of him who sent me. And see, that's what God wants us to do. And when we're rebellious and, and wicked and unbelieving, then we're going to do what we want to do. Mm -hmm. We're not concerned about what God wants us to do. Jesus was concerned about the Father's will because he had love in his heart for his Father. And the Father dearly loved him, and he, he loved him. And God knows when you don't love him. It says, if I alone testify about myself, my testimony is not valid. There is another Father, my Father, who testifies about me. And I know without any doubt that his testimony on my behalf is true and valid. You know, God is uh, so uh, good to us, and he's also merciful to us. And then it, it says here also, the 38th verse in the same chapter of John says, You do not have this word, the scripture abiding in you, actually living in your hearts and minds, because you do not believe in him who has sent him. And that all goes back to Hebrews, the third chapter, the 12th verse, talking about our hearts and minds. If you do not believe in him, then he's not abiding in you. And then you can't turn around and say, I prayed to God, I've been praying to him, and I, I haven't got an answer. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, because you, you, you just, I just had to tell the truth, you don't belong to him. You don't belong to him. And then let's go to uh, John the third chapter. It says here in the um, 15th verse, so that whoever believes in him have eternal life after physical death will actually live forever. But God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son. So that whoever believes, going back to belief again, mm -hmm. whoever believes, you know, have faith mm -hmm. and trust in him as Savior shall not perish but have eternal life. It said, for God did not send the son into the world to judge and condemn the world. That, it, that is to initiate a final judgment of the world but that the world might be saved through him. Today, you know, we have today. God doesn't want us to perish. He loves us. It said, whoever believes and has decided to trust in him as personal Savior and Lord is not judged. For this one, there is no judgment, no rejection, no condemnation. But the one who does not believe and has decided to reject him as personal Savior and Lord, is judged already. You know, uh, I read that uh, Hebrews, the third chapter, that 12th verse. Mm -hmm. uh, that's someone that's turning away from the living God. Mm -hmm. Just don't want to trust, don't want to believe. And it says here, that one has been convicted and sentenced because he has not believed and trusted in the name of the one and only begotten Son of God, the one who truly unique, the only one of his kind, the, the one who alone can save him. It said, this is the judgment, that is the cause for an indictment, the test by which people are judged, the basis for the sentence. The light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light. For their deeds were evil. Mm -hmm. For every wrongdoer hates the light and does not come to the light, but shrinks from it for the fear that his sinful, worthless activities will be exposed and condemned. It says, But whoever practices truth and does what is right and morally, ethically, and spiritually comes to the light. So that his works may be plainly shown to be what they are, accomplished in God's divinely prompted 
done with God's help and dependence on him. Because, see, the reason God wants us to trust and rely on him because he's actually doing everything that he tells us to do. Mm -hmm. He's helping us do it. Whatever purpose he has for you, he fixes it so you can do it. He makes the opportunity just right. He just he tells us through the Holy Spirit exactly what to do. He may say, I want you to get up real early and pray tomorrow morning. And then I want you to uh, do a few things, you know, around the house maybe, or do whatever you're supposed to do when you get at work. Maybe just to help somebody. And by you not doing what he's telling you to do, or you avoid the different things he even set up, you know, mm -hmm. your opportunity, but you say, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't see why I had to do it. And so then you miss your opportunity. You miss your blessings because you failed to be a blessing to someone. Because you didn't, uh, you had wickedness in your heart. And believe in just thinking about yourself. Mm -hmm. And so uh, God don't want us to be that way. Now let's turn to John, the 10th chapter. It says here in the 14th verse. There's a lot of people want to say, well, I don't know how to, how to act. And what am I supposed to do? And we, we have to follow the word of God. But you can't follow the word of God if you're not reading the word of God. If you're not praying uh, daily and throughout the day to, to God to help you. You have to have a personal relationship with our Father. And he'll tell you what he wants you to do because he loves us. I just said that in the third chapter of John, how much he loves us. But here it says in the 14th uh, verse, I am the good shepherd and I know without any doubt those who are my own. And my own know me. And have a deep personal relationship with me. And we do. Many, many of us have called out to God when we when we in need or in pain or someone else in our, in our life, uh, loved ones that are in need or don't even have to be somebody we know, but we just have compassion. Uh, we have a compassion for people anyway because God put it in us. And so we're praying for people and want them to help, uh, get the help they need. And we see the uh, manifestations of God, the way he work on them and change their hearts and uh, bring good health to them, the healing to their body. It says, even the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I laid down my very own life, sacrificing it for the benefit of the sheep. This is what Christ has done for us. And it says, I have other sheep beside these that are not of this fold, and I must bring those also, and they will listen to my voice and pay attention to my call. They will become one flock with one shepherd. And that's what God wants from all of us. He wants us to get the word out to the people. But we all want to be a one flock. We all the church, his church. Mm -hmm. And he is the shepherd over us. And see, for this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my own life so that I may take it back. No one takes it away from me, but I lay it down voluntarily. That's the way he wants us to do. He wants us to voluntarily serve his purpose. He's not going to force us to do anything. It has to be voluntary. I said, I'm authorized to have power to lay it down and to give it up, and I'm authorized to have power to take it back. And this command I received from my Father, you know, from our Heavenly Father. But then if you just go over to the 27th verse, no, the 26th verse. It says, but he was talking to the Jewish people here, those unbelievers. He said, but you do not believe me, so you do not trust and follow me. Those are the ones who will not trust and follow him, the ones that are unbelievers, because you are not my sheep. Mm -hmm. It says, the sheep that are my own, hear my voice and listen to me. I know them and they follow me. 
and I give them eternal life, and they will never, ever, by any means, perish. And no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. Now, if that don't give you some comfort and calmness and peace, I don't know what will. It says, my Father who has given them to me is greater and mightier than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of, of the Father's hand. And I and the Father are one in essence and nature. And at that time, the Jewish uh, people that were there were ready to stone him. They were so um, angry, you know, at this point. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, they was just livid and, uh, and ready to bring destruction on him. And if you turn with me, uh, turn with me back to, we're going to go to Thessalonians, the first chapter. Um, and I may end it up with uh, Hebrews. Yeah, Thessalonians. Yeah, first Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. You know, I didn't get so I don't like to. I'm not going to rush through the Word of God because mm -hmm. you believe in so many things. Uh, you don't want to admit one word. <laughs> but I already know that I. I'm going to go back over it again, and I'm going to read it again. I get more and more out of it. See, when you read the Word of God, and He knows you're sincere about receiving His Word, He blesses you. So the more you read, the more blessings you get, and the more life you get. Amen. And so it just makes you excited, so you go back, and you say, I didn't even see that in there. And some things we don't see because we be changing throughout the day. We be getting more and more grace. Hallelujah. We get more and more grace. And with that grace, I mean, we be getting undeserved uh, mercies and favors. It's a favor upon favor. So you, you be receiving more sight and you can see more and hear more because he's made those things uh, visible and invisible. Mm -hmm. So we begin to see things that are invisible to other people, we begin to hear things that other people don't hear. And it excites mm -hmm. us. It excites me. <laughs> and I, I know it excites others too because they say, I didn't hear it like that before. Mm -hmm. And so, anyway, uh, I'm looking at the very first Thessalonians, the uh, fifth verse, the twelfth, um, excuse me, the fifth chapter, the twelfth verse. Uh, and it's talking about, the, you know, our conduct the way we should be. Uh, mm -hmm. But before I even get there, I'm, a, I'm just going to read this verse out of the fifth chapter, the fourth verse. It said, um, But you believers, all you who believe in Christ as Savior, acknowledge Him as God's Son, are not in spiritual darkness, nor held by its power, that the day the judgment of the would overtake you by surprise like a thief. And see, this mm -hmm. is what happens to people that are not believers. Uh, they always take it in, you know, like a thief coming up on them. It says, well, you are all sons of light and sons of day, and we do not belong to the night nor the darkness. So let us not sleep in spiritual indifference in the rest of the world like the rest of the world does, but let us keep wide awake, alert, and cautious. Let us be sober and self-controlled and calm and wise. And this is what, what I mean, we be getting more, you know, than someone that's uh, not safe. It says, for those who sleep, sleep at night. Those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we believers belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on a breastplate of, uh, of faith and love and a, as a helmet and hope and confidence and assurance of salvation. But God has not destined us to inquire his wrath. That is, he did not select us to condemn us. 
-hmm. but to attain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died willingly for us so that whether we are awake, alive, or asleep, dead, at Christ's appearing, we will live together with him, sharing eternal life. And so it says, therefore, encourage and comfort one another, as I was reading in Hebrews, and build up one another, just as you are doing. He wants us to do that. Believers, we mm -hmm. should always do that. And then 12 says, now ask your brother and sisters to appreciate those who diligently work among you, recognize and acknowledge and respect your leaders. These are people who are, you know, that's going out evangelizing and and given the word, they may be in your church, they may be in a school, wherever they are. You, you can tell a believer by the way they act, they have love in their heart, and they usually are givers. If they make an error or make a mistake, they, they readily able to ask you to forgive them of their mistakes. And they readily forgive you for things you have done, too, without holding a grudge or something like that against you. And it says, who are in charge over you in the Lord, and who give you instruction. And it says, and we ask that you appreciate them and hold them in the highest esteem and love because of their work on your behalf, live in peace with one another. Mm -hmm. And we should be doing this right now on earth. It should be more peaceful. But as we see, uh, if you look at the media and the news, it isn't very peaceful. Mm -hmm. But then you don't want to look at all of that either, because sometimes they, they don't always show the, the uh, truth. They show what they want to inflict in your mind and bring a lot of worry, worry on your mind. And uh, it also changes the way people's behavior is. In looking the pictures. At right. In the pictures they show. Right. And so we earnestly urge you believers, admonish those who are out of line, undisciplined, unruly, disorderly, encourage the timid who lack spiritual courage to help the spiritually weak. Uh, be patient with one another, also controlling your temper. So we had to do all these things. Mm -hmm. It says, and see that no one repays another with evil, but evil. God don't want us to be, uh, to act like a worldly person. Or somebody evil toward you, you're not supposed to turn around and be evil back to them. But it says, always seek that which is good for one another and for all people. And John speaks of that in the uh, 13th chapter, the 34th verse, uh, 34th verse, excuse me. He says, seek the best for one another. We're supposed to love one another and always seek the best for one another. And it says, rejoice always in the light and faith. Unceasing, persistent in prayer, as I was saying, we're supposed to pray for one another. It says, in every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continue to give thanks to God, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. It says, do not quench, subdue, or be unresponsive to working the working and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, because God has given us His Holy Spirit to help us. Mm -hmm. But if you if you have a wickedness and unbelieving heart, and refuse to trust and rely on God, a heart that turns away from the living God, you're not going to listen to the Holy Spirit. And this is why a lot of things are going wrong in your life. Because you have not accepted God as your Lord and Savior in your heart. And so you're not uh, responsive. And you're not being guided by the Holy Spirit. You're being guided by other type of spirits that are in darkness. They're not of God. It says, do not scorn or reject the gifts of prophecy or uh, uh, spoken in revelations and words of instructional exhortation or warnings, but test all things carefully so you recognize what is good and hold, hold firmly to that which is good. It said, abstain from every form of evil and withdraw and keep away from it. I'm ending up now. It says, and now may God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. That is, separate you from prof 
profane and vulgar things, make you pure and whole and undamaged, consecrated to him, set apart for his purpose, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept complete and be found blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Faithfully and uh, I can't even talk about faithfully, absolutely, excuse me, trust him worthy. He is calling you. Mm -hmm. Faithful and abs absolutely, absolutely trustworthy is he who is calling you to himself for your salvation. And he will do it. He will fulfill his call by making you holy, guarding you, watching over you, protecting you as his own. And with all of that said, you can't help but have a calmness and a peacefulness in you when you know that we have a Lord and Savior like that. And so, again, take care, brothers and sisters, that there be in any one of you a wicked, unbelieving heart which refuses to trust and rely on the Lord, a heart that turns away from the living God. And so with the things of it is, as it says in the scripture, our ways are not the ways of God. Our thoughts are not always his thoughts. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to think like he thinks. And the only way you're going to do that is follow the spirit. Mm -hmm. Not your, not your spirit. And I thank everyone for yeah, listening and being here. Turn the lights upstairs, huh? Yeah, we will continue on service. Amen. Amen. Amen.